Zero Accounting Software 2023 Make Loan Payments Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page we also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom zero homepage going into the company file. We set up in a prior presentation, get great guitars, duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time, right click in the tab up top to do so, duplicate that is, right click in the tab up top to do so, duplicate that is, back to the tab to the middle. We're going to the accounting drop down, taking a look at the balance sheet report, then we'll tab to the right accounting drop down this time the income statement going back to the tab to the left as the one to the right is thinking accounting drop down not accounting drop down let's do the date drop down and do a custom date range if we may and 2023 the end of it update it now we're going to do something a little bit different on the income statement because we're on the second month of operations so we might want to see what's happening in the month we're working in as well as the prior month so i would like to do a side-by-side -side comparison so i'm going to hit the drop down and let's say we want to do a custom date and i'll start with january the beginning of january to the end of january as the first column and then i'd like to put another column over here with february so I might then go to the edit layout and say, I'd like to add a column, please. Let's go to the column up top. And I wanna have basically a date uh, oriented column. So I'm gonna go then into that second column and I'd like to see then the month of February. Notice it's already broken out by month here. It's giving me the month. If I wanted to change you know, everything, I can go to the custom here, but it's broken out by month. I'm gonna use these to bring us to February. So now we have February january and february we might want to see the difference between january and february as well so i could add another one and do like a formula and say this is going to be the difference between the two so i'm going to say i want to take uh january minus uh february and we could take january minus uh february and do something like that to take the difference between the two. Now note sometimes with these types of reports, you might put like the current month up front and then the second month uh, next to it or something like that, but we'll keep this for now. And then we're gonna say this is the change. Let's call it change on the column header and let's update that layout and take a look at it, see how it looks, how it feels. So now we don't have anything in February yet. We just have the January numbers. Let's save this. I'm going to customize it. Uh, uh, save the customization. And I'm going to say it's going to be a comparative, comparative, comparative income statement. Let's call it and save it. So I'll open that going forward. So now we can see what we're doing in January and February. Okay. Let's go back to the first tab. Now, last time we did our amortization table so now we're going to imagine we got our loan outstanding that's on the balance sheet just a quick look at that just so we could check it out there's the seventy-two thousand uh loan we're now going to make a payment according to the amortization table our first payment payment number one we're going to say and it's a little bit more complex than just normal transactions where money is going out because there's going to be three accounts affected usually when we record the payment because we're gonna to have to record a decrease to cash for this amount. Let's make this green so I can see which one we're working on. We'll make it green. We're gonna show a decrease for this amount. We're gonna show interest expense for this amount and the loan reduction will be this amount, which will take the loan balance down to here. So 
we you might think well that's not too bad i can i can do that and i can start to memorize the transaction going forward but notice you can't really use the bank feeds to make a nice neat rule to memorize the transaction because in payment two for the second month which we'll take a look at as well there's a different breakout between interest and principal so really even if you have bank feeds on and you're trying to make everything automated you still have to do something with the loan payments to properly break out interest in principal so that means even with bank feeds you got to go in there and kind of fix it or you could try to do an adjusting entry process so you might say if you are working with a cpa firm or if you just want to do periodic adjustments at the end of the year and try to automate all your data input you might just not record the interest and wait till the end of the year or the end of the month or the end of the year in order to break out the interest. So in other words, if you have your bank feeds on, you might just say, I'm gonna reduce the cash by the payment. The other side's gonna reduce the loan account. Only two accounts affected. I can make a bank rule for it. So it happens automatically. And then at the end of the year, in this case, after 12 payments, I can make a periodic adjustment, which will adjust the proper amount of the loan balance to tie into the amortization table and the other side recording the interest for the entire year. So that's a that's a method you might want to keep in mind if you're trying to automate everything. That could work okay as well. But we're going to we're going to record each payment with the interest and principal broken out here. Let's go back on over and make a payment. So I'm going to say it's going to be a money out. We're going to be spending money. So spend money on the loan. It's going to come out of the checking account. We're going to say checking account going down. We're going to say it's going to, let's say Chase is our bank. Let's say Chase Bank. We'll say it's going to be a new contact. And we're going to put one in there for the beginning of, we're going to pretend it's at the beginning of the year. So I'll put one in there at, at uh, February 1st. And then we'll put one in there at the end of February, just so we can see the two payments, even though they're a month apart. So then we've got the reference. I'm gonna make it a check this time, because I, I think I made it a check on the bank statements. Uh, so we'll see that. I might have to change the check number because I think I skipped a couple checks. And then I'm gonna go down here and say the description. This is gonna be, let's say first uh, loan payment, payment and so now we're going to say we're going to pay uh uh i'm going to put the interest first 300 300 is going to go to interest now i'm going to see if they have an interest account for me here interest they don't have one so i'm going to set up an account i'm going to say it needs to be an expense account so i'll put it somewhere in the expense range so let's put it down. I'll put it, I'll kind of name it down here closer to the other expenses because I might move it down to other expenses because sometimes you might want it uh, down in other expenses, which I'll talk about more later. But let's make it 7125. Let's say 7125. Add, uh, I'm going to type 7125 in first. It's going to be an expense type of account. Expense. And the name is going to be interest expense expense. I like to put the name expense, even though that's redundant because it's already an expense because you might have interest payable or accrued interest. So that's why sometimes you have that redundancy of an expense, even though it's in the expense category. All right, let's save it and 300 there. And then the other side is going to go for the amount of the loan reduction one zero five eight seven three so one zero five eight point seven three which should give us a total of the one three five eight seven three uh uh a total one three five eight seven three so that looks good and this is going to go to the loan balance okay so what's going to happen here cash is going down by the total amount we're going to pay one three five eight seven three that's going to come out of our bank account 300 is basically rent it's going to go away it's us renting the money uh that we that we've been using to buy our fixed assets and whatnot so it goes away we're just going to expense it just like if we were renting 
an office building and then this amount is the amount that's going to reduce the loan reduction from 72,000 down to 70,941. So after we record this, the loan balance should be at that amount. If it's not, we probably did something wrong. So let's go ahead and save it. I'm going to save it and it's going to try to allocate a number. Now I skipped a couple of these, which is going to mess us up on our bank rec. So I'm going to change the number on the check to 1016 because that's what it should be on the bank rec that we'll do in a future section or course. So if you don't do that, that's okay. It's not a big deal. And then we'll say save it and go to the balance sheet. Let's update the balance sheet. And then of course, if I drill down on the checking account, we should have a decrease to the checking. So I'm gonna scroll down and we've got a uh, decrease to the checking of the full amount, the 135873, the full amount, 135873, scrolling back up and back to the balance sheet the other side on the income statement update the income statement we should now have interest interest expense at the 300 for month number two in our comparative income statement which is totally cool back to the first tab and then we want to then where, where my balance sheet go we're going to then go down to the loan payable so the loan payable is now down to the 70,941.27. Does that match what's on our amortization table? It does. That's great. Now we're going to imagine a month goes by and I'm just going to make this one like, let's say this one, I'll ungreenify it and I'll make this one greenified. So now this one's the same, uh, except that there's a difference between the interest and the loan balance. That's the issue. That's the problem. Uh, it's not just that there's three accounts affected that throws off our whole automation kind of system. It's the fact that the principal and interest will differ. So we're going to imagine a month has passed just so we can see the difference in the data input and how that might impact the way we might use like bank feeds. So if I go back on over and I do the second, uh, the second transaction or payment, let's hit the plus button up top and say we're going to spend money again. We're spending money like crazy people like the, the government or something it's just going crazy all right so then we're going to say this is this is going to be to chase again chase uh chase and i'm going to say that it's going out at the end of february this time so i'm going to say this is the end of feb feb 28 so a month has passed but it's not quite the next month. So we can have both payments in the same month, but it's basically a month away. We're going to stay here. And then the description loan payment number two, numero dos. And then now the interest that we're going to break out has now changed to 295.59. So 295.59, is that right? Did I dyslexify one of those 29559? There's a lot of fives and nines in there. It's a little, a little sketchy. So anyways, this is going to go into the interest expense. And then the other side, the other side is going to be the loan reduction 106.314, 106.314. And that's going to go into the loan payable. And that means that the total is going to be the 135873. 135873. So what's going to happen here? decrease the checking account 135873 then the rent amount has gone down instead of 300 which was you know this number was the same as before this number is different now it's less and that means that this number is more so that that's the problem because it's going to make it difficult for us to memorize uh, these type of transactions even with basically bank rules and again one way around that might be then I'm just going to record everything to the loan payable, not breaking out the interest and planning to make periodic adjustments at the end of month or possibly a year. If you're talking about a small business, tying it out to the amortization table on a yearly basis, either myself or possibly with the help or assistance of a CPA uh, firm or uh, accountant. And that way you can kind of automate everything uh, and still be in a cash based system, possibly using the bank feeds. So let's do this. Once this is recorded, it should bring the loan balance down to the 6987813. 
So let's check it out and see if that is indeed what happens. I should have assigned a check number again. I didn't assign a check number. That's okay. It's too late now, man. It's too late now. Update it. The bank rec will have some missing check numbers, but we'll deal with it when we get there. Let's go into the check-in account. Let's go into the check-in account. I'm not even worried about it. It'll be okay. We'll still be able to figure stuff out. So we're going to say, if I scroll down, there's uh, the second payment we made at the end of February. So we're imagining a month has passed. Same amount in here that went down because the payment's the same on a normal installment uh, type of loan. Let's go back to the balance sheet. And then on the income statement side, go into the income statement, update in the income statement. We then have the interest. But if I go into the interest for the second month, we recorded both payments in the second month here, February, uh, but they're different for the two payments that are a month apart. That's the that's the snag in the that's the the fly in the soup uh, or the ointment that uh, that gets all messed up when you're trying to get a suntan. There's fly in the ointment in your suntan ointment or something, and then you get a little fly dot in, instead of a tan spot right where the fly was. Uh, uh, what was I talking? Anyways, if I go back to the balance sheet, then on the loan payable, uh, if we go into the loan payable, we're down to 6987813, which does tie out here, 6987813. Uh, but if I go into that amount, so it looks like we did it correctly, which is nice. That's good to know. But if I go into that amount, then uh, these two amounts are different as well, the amount of the loan reduction. So, one more time, the last payment, the, the the second way you can do this is just say, I'm just going to record all of the payments decreased to cash, the whole other amount going to loan reduction, not breaking out the interest, which means your loan reduction will be too low. And then at the end of the year, then have your CPA or yourself take the amortization table and say, this is what it should be. The difference is the interest for the year and make an adjusting entry by doing so, being able to automate the transactions for the cash payments uh, without having to break out and, and make them manual or whatever. And that's one method you can use. All right, let's 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 open up the trustee trial balance and see where we stand. I'm going to tab to the right, going to go to the uh, accounts and go into our reports and open up the trustee trial, trustee trial balance. And... Now the trial balance is usually best run for like a year long period. So we'll run it from the year to date, not breaking out the, the second month of February, which we are on, which we did kind of for the income statement, because that's the timing statement, which is a great statement to be breaking out and comparing what you did in month one versus month two, period one, period two, and so on. Let's go ahead and update this one. If your numbers tie out to our numbers, then that's good, unless we're both wrong, right? So if there's we that's so and if not then try changing the date range and see if it's a date issue likely if you were correct last time then and something's wrong this time it would be we changed the bank account and we changed the loan payable account down here and we changed the interest expense account so you would think that those would be the ones that would be off if you were on last time